Good morning. My name is Father Christopher Bender. I'm the Dean of St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and also Chair of the Orthodox Fellowship of the Transfiguration Steering Committee. Uh, and I will be your moderator today for this event. We want to welcome you, and I'm now I have to speak uh, out of turn because I speak on behalf of our host, Father Stephen Zorzos, the, the um, dean of this cathedral, who is not uh, here because he has uh, to do his duty. He's going to be uh, meeting uh, His Eminence Archbishop Demetrius at the airport and bringing him to our event. Uh, his Eminence had to change his plans slightly, so instead of him giving the very first uh, presentation, the first speech, uh, we'll have our, our panel two panel discussions and then His Eminence will speak, give his keynote address. Uh, I'd also like to introduce Father John Chrysavgis, a member of our steering committee. And Father John is the, uh, in, uh, an, uh, the environmental assistant, or uh, I'm not quite sure your position, with, quite sure uh, with, his, um, with His All Holiness, Patriarch Bartholomew, in uh, Constantinople and uh, is very, very active on, on the world scene with regard to matters relating to God's creation and the protection of it. And uh, I'd like to especially thank him and also Mr. Fred Kruger, the director of our fellowship, who uh, are, were clearly the guiding lights behind organizing the entire event along with the rest of the steering committee, who I also thank. Uh, especially uh, uh, Dr. Achilles Aramantiades. Uh, we are going to begin with prayer, as is appropriate in an Orthodox setting. Uh, the prayer, though, that we will begin with is the Trisayun. Uh, that is the, the short memorials uh, prayer for the uh, departed. And the reason why is because, of course, I'm sure as all of you are aware, there has been terrible death and devastation in the Philippines due to what possibly might be the most uh, violent hurricane to ever touch land in, since records have been kept. And uh, I thought it appropriate today to begin with a prayer for those who have lost their lives. I'd like to also point out that uh, although we cannot, or scientists say, that they cannot uh, point at any specific event and say that's, the, that's climate change at work and uh, that's the reason why it happened. What they do say is that uh, one of the consequences of changing the world's climate is that uh, such storms will become more and more violent over time. So that uh, recently I just read and said that, that Hurricane Sandy, which was the storm of the century, may someday be the norm. Uh, when we look at what happened in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, with the hurricane there, now this one, now in the Philipp and, and in the Philippines, and, and last year with Sandy, we perhaps begin to perceive a pattern. That's just something for us to think about. Please stand. <clears throat> Blessed is our God, always, now, and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. All holy trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our <coughs> trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. With
with the spirits of the righteous made perfect, give rest to the souls of your servants, O Savior, and keep them safe in that life of blessedness that is lived with you, O friend of men. In the place of your rest, O Lord, where all your saints repose, give rest also to the souls of your servants, for you alone are immortal. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you are our God who went down to Hades to lose the pains of the dead that were there. Give rest also to the souls of your servants, O Savior. Both now and ever and to the ages of ages, amen. O Virgin alone, pure and immaculate, that in maiden motherhood brought forth God, intercede for the salvation of the souls of your servants. Have mercy on us, God, according to great mercy. We pray to hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the souls of the servants of God, all those who have perished in the, uh, in the storm that has uh, hit the Philippines and Vietnam, depart this life, and for the forgiveness of all their sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let the Lord God establish their souls with the righteous repose, the mercies of God, the kingdom of the heavens, and the remission of their sins. Let us ask of Christ, mortal King and our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God of all spirits and of every flesh, who did try down death and overcome the devil, bestowing life on this your world, to the soul of these your servants who have perished in this uh, natural disaster, depart this life. To yourself, O Lord, give rest in a place of light, in a place of green pasture, in a place of refreshment, where pain and sorrow and mourning have fled away. Every sin by them committed in thought, word, or deed, you as a good and loving God forgive, seeing that there is no man who shall live in sin not, for you alone are without sin. Your righteousness is everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For you are the resurrection life repose of your servants, all those who have perished in this disaster, O Christ our God. And do we describe glory to your, with the your eternal Father and all who life creating spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Father, give the blessing. Glory to you, Christ our God, and hope glory to you. May Christ our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us. He's the mortal king's authority over both the dead and the living. The intercessions of a spotless, pure, and holy mother, over the holy, glorious, and all praise of the apostles. Our venerable God, bearing fathers, of holy and glorious forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of his holy, just and Lazarus, who lay in the grave four days, and of all the saints. Establish the souls of, of his servants departed from us in the tendings of the just, give them rest of the bosom of Abraham, and number them among the just through his goodness and compassion as a merciful God. Everlasting be your memory, or brothers, this is worthy of blessedness and everlasting memory. Everlasting be your memory, or brothers, this is worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. Everlasting be your memory, or brothers, this is worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. Eternal memory. Eternal memory. May their memory be eternal. And before you sit down, I will say one more prayer for our event today. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, we give thanks to you for all things. We thank you for all the blessings of life. We especially thank you, Lord, for the gift that you've given us to, uh, to spend our lives on this beautiful planet that you have created for our use. We ask you, Lord, to teach us humility and discernment and wisdom in inhabiting this home which belongs to you. We ask you, Lord, to grant us what, to learn what it means to be good stewards of that which is put into our care. We ask you, Lord, to also be with us today through Holy Spirit as we gather in order to learn more about our earthly home and our place in it and our responsibilities for it today during this conference. We ask that you bless all those who have, uh, who will be, have come here to make presentations and all those who have come to participate. We pray that each one you may escort safely back to their homes when we conclude. We give thanks to you for this facility and for all those who, by hosting us, have made possible this event, and we ask that you bless our time together. 
for we come here to glorify you, who is glorified together with the eternal Father and the all good life creating spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. The, uh, I assume that all of you have gotten a copy of the program for the day. We're going to be, our format will be to have uh, two keynote addresses and the rest of the time it will we'll be listening to panel discussions, which means that we're going to hear an awful lot of voices in a very short period of time. Therefore, I'd like to make some requests and reminders. Uh, each of our presenters is asked to present for 10 minutes uh, maximum so that the we can fit everyone in also the uh, if you do if we do have time for questions and answers I ask a, a, a kindly ask you to limit yourself to one question at so that others may also be able to ask questions uh, with you rather than uh, having because we simply won't have enough time to have a long dialogue at any point uh, We'll try to keep things moving and uh, so that we can fit everything in that we have planned for the day. The first uh, panel is on Orthodox theological, the Orthodox Theological Foundations for Creation Care, Putting Principles into Action in Our Lives. And this is uh, really very central to our theme for the day. On earth as it is in heaven is what we pray every time we say the Lord's Prayer as we did this morning. But we have to sometimes think about what does it mean that we live on this earth, but we're supposed to execute God's will as it is in heaven. Here is where it is important for us to understand what it means to put our orthodox faith into practice in how we live our lives, and especially with regard to God's creation. Please listen carefully and, and uh, so that at, by the end of the day we may perhaps ha have come to a, a new place with regard to understanding these issues and how best we can offer our own energies and services in order to foster uh, that which is of, will be of the most benefit to all of humanity and will be pleasing to our Lord. So then at this point I'd like to introduce again uh, Deacon, Reverend Deacon, Archdeacon John Krasavkis who is um, going to be the moderator of our first panel. His Eminence Metropolitan Savas of Pittsburgh uh, was hoping to be with us today. Unfortunately, his travel schedule just simply did not permit it. Therefore, uh, we are very pleased that Father John has agreed to uh, chair the panel instead. And uh, we'll, I will now turn the program over to him. So good morning and welcome. I've been given a couple of um, points of information to share with you. The proceedings through the day will be recorded by uh, the OCN, the Orthodox Christian Network, Father Chris Metropolis and his staff at the back of the room. And uh, I'm told that the talks will be available fairly quickly uh, on the Orthodox Fellowship of the Transfiguration um, website and also on the OCN website, possibly by the end of the week. Uh, there will be some interviews that will also appear and live tweets, I'm told. <laughs> I still don't know what all that means, <laughs> but on the Twitter account of OCN, if you look up myocn.net, uh, you'll be able to follow some of the tweets through the day that they'll be posting. Um, where is Alicia? Can we put the Alicia? Need to put a sign up to remember who we are. And uh, I, Father Chris mentioned I'm not Metropolitan Savas. Um, he's not here. Uh, we're very sorry that he's not here. I'm very honored to be representing him here uh, on this uh, panel. I am very glad that Father Chris decided to start with the memorial service because although it's a very somber note on which to begin a conference, it's a very real note as well. Uh, no one can say that we're talking abstractly 
uh, during this day. And the truth is that we tend to forget things. We tend to forget what really matters in this world. We tend to forget our impact on the world, and we tend to forget the people that suffer as a result of um, our actions, or as a result of, and or as a result of, natural disasters. And this is one of the worst ever. Um, so I think it's a very um, important note on which to believe, to begin. I think as human beings, we, we do what we do as far as creation care goes because it's the right thing to do. Uh, we know or should know our place in the world. Uh, we know or should know our responsibility in our world. We know or should know that we're not alone in this world that we're not the only ones that matter in this world. We know, or we should know, that we're not proprietors of this universe. And then as Christians, since this is a um, um, meeting of the Orthodox Christian Fellowship of the Transfiguration, we also believe in a God that created the world out of love. We believe and we are convinced that it's to this God that the earth belongs and everything that's within it and all of us who live in it. We tend to forget these basic truths, but they're part of our creed, part of uh, our traditional beliefs. So I'm very pleased this morning to begin this conference with a look at our traditional roots, our theological roots, our scriptural roots, um, to go back to the beginning and to hear from three very uh, distinguished speakers. We'll hear from Father Terence Baz from the Antiochian Orthodox Church, uh, a fellow Australian, um, with uh, a more typical Australian accent than mine, and um, someone who holds a doctorate in environmental theology, in fact, on religion and ecology from the Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, uh, and uh, whose parish is in Syracuse, I believe, and who's worked um, a great deal in this area, uh, particularly through what was the National Council of Churches Echo Justice Program that Father Christopher Bender was also involved in. Then our second speaker will be Dr. Elizabeth Theokritov, uh, whom I know for many years now, going back to our time in Oxford. Um, a very important theological voice in uh, the environmental movement that we have in the Orthodox Church. One who's uh, studied, her own doctorate was in liturgical theology, and so she knows how to blend liturgy and creation. Uh, she's written a very good book, which is for sale at the back of the room, on creation, published by St. Vladimir's Seminary Press, and um, who's translated several texts on the environment, including a book by Anestis Kesselopoulos, a professor in Thessalonica in Greece, again published by St. Vladimir's, and a small booklet by Father Vasilios, the former abbot of Eviron Monastery on Mount Athos, for sale at the back of the room as well. And our third speaker, um, representing in the community that is our host community, and I want to him and through him to thank Father Stephen Zorzos for his very generous hospitality uh, and spontaneous response to our uh, request for him to host this event. We're very grateful to him. And Father Demetrius Lee was a former student of mine at Holy Cross. Uh, I'm very pleased to see him dressed in clerical clothes. He's this was his first assignment, St. Sophia. He'll be replacing Father Stephen, who's at the airport, in fact, picking up the Archbishop right now and delivering for us a paper that was prepared by Father Stephen. So we'll begin with Father Terence. Again, we're hoping that we'll keep to 10 minutes and that will give us some time for questions as well. Father Terence. 
Father John, thank you very much. Uh, just to uh, clarify one small detail, I'm actually retired now, although I do still live in Syracuse, Syracuse New York. Um, to give a talk on theology in 10 minutes is just, you know, basically almost out of the question. So what I'm going to do is try to give some sort of a brush stroke of, uh, you know, what we're talking about when it comes to theology. Um, what I did do, and I decided just to bring it so you'll know, I had an article pub published in 2010 giving basically a precis of um, a summary of orthodox theology and how it and, and creation and how it fits into um, our responsibilities as Orthodox Christians in this very important issue. Um, and you've just heard about the relevance of it and how, you know, how do Orthodox respond. I can't even go into that because of such a short time frame. I don't want to mess up the rest of the day's schedule, so I'm going to be as brief as I possibly can. So. So thank you, and thank you to the panel for asking me to do this, and I'll commence the talk now. Reverend clergy, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked to give a short presentation here today. Um, what I forgot to mention is that this article that I referred to will be online as part of this conference. So anyone, especially seminarians, if you want more detail about the theology, and parts that I leave out today, you'll be able to get to see it online and you'll be able to refer to it and delve into it. Even for clergy, there's a lot of scriptural references uh, that may help with your sermons, etc. when you want to discuss this particular part of our theology. In the New Testament, the phrase, since the foundation of the world, is common and emphasizes how creation affects... Sorry, I've got to go back here. The basis for this... The scriptures, the basis for the scriptures goes back to the very beginning of the Bible. From the creation stories in Genesis to the prophets, the books of wisdom, the Psalms, many references are made to our role for this created cosmos, its awesomeness, moral obligations towards it, and the Jewish liturgical texts. The created universe is seen as part of salvation's history's cosmic battle with many references from the story of Adam and Eve to Amos's prophecy of a new era about how hostile powers try to thwart the beauty of God's creation but never prevail against it. In the New Testament, the phrase since the foundation of the world is common and emphasizes how creation affects its creatures now. God's paternal care is currently manifested but also imposes obligations on us. Thus the present world is God's domain, and it is still swayed by the original order of creation. Christ is seen as the messianic author of the new world, and a new messianic order is being ushered in where the least in the kingdom, including creation, is gre even greater than the prophets. Likewise, the early New Testament community prays to the creator of heaven and earth for intercession. In other words, the New Testament scriptures continue the themes of the Old Testament, but now it is all in Christ. St. Paul has a very rich theology of creation in which he elaborates on the theme that creation and salvation are now one in Christ. He also elaborates on the Trinitarian aspect of creation, emphasizing Christ's role in creation as that of Lord and mediator. He is the one media, mediator and was pre-existent before the world began. His role is cosmic, and this is made clear in his hymn to the creation in Colossians. Christ's saving role and its implication for today is taken a step further than it is in the book of wisdom because the wisdom of creation is now viewed as the person of the Son of God who actively participates in creation since all things we created through him. He is also the goal of creation and the power which still preserves and sustains the beings of every creature. Christ is the new Adam, the new creation and a new man. And this was planned since the foundation of the world and realized in the fullness of time as a mystery hidden for ages in God. 
Thus, the second creation culminates salvation history and restores creation to a higher plane. The resurrection released the energies which bring the second creation to its final transfiguration, that glory for which in our eager longing we now groan in travail. The final glorification will produce new heavens and a new earth. Creation will be perfected by the power of Christ who will vanquish all enemies, establish his messianic kingdom and subject himself to the Father. For creation, everything that is against Christ will be banished. Matter will not be annihilated but transformed and thus the old world will be like a seed that must be sown because it is the God-given germ of this final eon. What I've said here is merely a glance of what St. Paul has written on creation. Indeed, all the New Testament epistles make their own contributions to this theology. As well as this, the early church fathers reaffirm and develop this theology. All I could suggest again is look at my article if you want to delve into it more. Mm -hmm.